All my lightning talks, this is an introduction topic, so it's O1 101. As a show of hands, who has heard of O1 or knows what it is? So, a quarter. So you'll learn nothing, but hopefully the three quarters will learn something. Um, so Owen's been bubbling, around, bubbling away for the last year or so, but in the last six months it started to gain a lot of momentum. Um, and at NDC in London in December, it became pretty apparent that this is now the preferred way to build web apps on top of Microsoft stuff. So what is Owen? So it's the open web interface for .NET. And it defines a standard interface between web servers and web applications and frameworks. It's a spec, so there's no um, implementation of it. There, well, Microsoft have given an implementation, but it's a spec that can be implemented in any CLR language, F Sharp or IL directly if you want. So what is Owen really? It's Microsoft's answer, answer to Node.js. So who has used Node or Connect in particular? Just more people, so you, if you're familiar with Connect, it allows you to chain together middleware to form a pipeline so the request comes in, goes through authentication, routing, and eventually gets handed off to your code. And the idea is that you can have small focus components that build up an entire application. So Owen seeks to bring that to the Microsoft platform. So why, why Owen, or what are the goals of the Owen project? Why are Microsoft doing it? They want composability. So in thinking about the goals, it's interesting to think about what the current state of play is and where they want to move from to. So for composability at the moment, every single component in the Microsoft web stack depends on system.web. It's a massive assembly, it's five plus megabytes. It's got things like authentication, caching, SMTP and pop, right through to app layer stuff like um, routing and data binding. So it does not follow the solid principles at all. They seek to break that up into lots and lots of small focus components, each of which are interchangeable, can be serviced on a different cadence, that kind of thing. They want portability. Really, that's just about breaking the boundary between IIS, did I get that right? Yes, IIS and ASP.NET and your applications so that you can host on different servers and Owen even allows you to host in memory for doing things like unit tests, which is quite cool. Uh, performance, they have a, as a stated goal as well. I'm not sure that the architecture inherently lends itself any more or less to performant code, but they have interest in benchmarks where the number of requests per second is, you know, 150% what they have on the current platform. But really, that's just removing 15 years of, of cruft that's accumulated. So, what does this look like? Uh, this iApp builder is the boundary, this is the way that middleware components communicate to each other to build up the pipeline. So as I said, they don't want you to have to take a dependency on any assemblies or anything. So you'll see that there's object everywhere, params object, string to object dictionary. They wanted this to be very, very simple and very, very understandable. And then that comes with some consequences like, you know, essentially don't have type safety. The two methods in this that are of interest are properties. So properties is a dictionary of string to object. This allows the, each stage in the pipeline to pass data on to the next. So for example, the server like IIS that answers the request might put in things like owen.requestPath or owen.requestBody. That goes through to an auth layer that might do, you know, owen.userPrincipal. Um, that could go through to some Redgate middleware that might do something like redgate.crmid. And then by the time it goes through to your actual application, which is you know, issuing invoices or something, it has all the data it needs. And then there's also use, which just allows you to chain together middleware to build up the entire application. Um, so this all looks a bit disgusting, but you've probably already used the one without realizing it if you're using Visual Studio 2013. So when you do file new project in Visual Studio 2013, you get something like this, minus the ASCII art. Um, anyone can build on top of Owen, so it is an open standard. Microsoft, as the main proponents of this standard, have obviously built on top of it. And they've built on top of it with a project they call Katana. Katana is a bunch of servers and middleware that adhere to the Owen spec. So when you do file a new web project inside VS, it generates this startup object, which is a Katana object, 
which it will use to bootstrap your app and plug it into the Owen pipeline. Um, so you're probably already using it, uh, and you should go and sort of learn more about it. Um, why should you care, or why is this relevant? Um, has anyone heard of Nancy? A quarter of people again. So Nancy is a very interesting framework um, on top of .NET for building web apps. It's like Sinatra under Ruby if you've used that. The problem with Nancy is that it requires a pretty big shift. It's definitely not supported by Microsoft. It is a pain to run on top of IIS without knowing what you're doing. It's a pain to run on things like Azure without knowing what you're doing. And what Microsoft would like to do is to not make that a pain. So with NuGet, they now have a massive body of open source authors and package maintainers that are putting out a great open source code. And they want to make that easier for people to do, to choose the components that work for them. So Owen, they hope, will allow people like the Nancy project to break their thing up into small components so you can use IIS with Nancy's author auth authentication stuff, maybe MVC's routing, Razor as a view language, and plug all this together to build up the app that works for you. Um, so I would advise you if you're building web apps now on top of Microsoft stuff, to start thinking about how you can break out some of the things that are in your application at the moment but aren't actually part of your application, things like authentication that are reusable across multiple applications, think about how you can break them, break them up into own middleware because it will make your life much easier when this eventually does become the absolute standard way of building things. So any questions? David? I think it's going to be about how you break up, say, authentication. So for us, authentication is like the login page, there's a page after you've logged in to change your password, there's a way to create new user accounts. It feels like that's kind of quite, how would you go about putting that into OWN, just as an example? So things like OAuth, so that maybe in your case it wouldn't be, but I bet in your case if you were doing hosted DM, that login should be the exact same <clears throat> Sorry, as cloud services login. Yeah. So that's a middleware component between those two things. Yeah. The very general case is things like OAuth. If you're an OAuth provider, why should we have to write our, or not, I'm going to mix up the terminology, but not an endpoint that OAuth, OAuth people can contact, but to integrate OAuth into your app, why should we build one and Microsoft build one and the Nancy guys build one? Yeah. Why is it not just one you can plug in that redirects to Google or whoever, whoever's of interest? So I guess on the authentication side of things, so you wouldn't have the, like, the new user sign application and stuff like that, but that it Parts of that necessarily, the, the stuff that takes a request and decides whether that user is logged in, whether that session is valid, whether they have permission to be getting at that URL. Yeah, all of that stuff should really be abstracted from the thing that's sharing like, your yeah, deployments. Because in your slot, you can actually have the thing that you can use Google authentication there, hooking the Google OAuth system for you. Any cross cutting concerns, things like diagnostic, diagnostics, logging all of that stuff that isn't really part of your application. You put it there because you've nowhere better to put it, but it's not really part of your app. It's not part of your invoice app to know about how to do logging or how to do any of this stuff. You can do those as middleware components, which ultimately is good for your application now because it gives you a nicer architecture and it's better in the future because you can reuse the code. Decent. Yeah, so the cool thing for this, the, one of the reasons I like this and used it was that you can run this all in memory so you can write unit tests that spin up from like the request bytes go in through the view and back down. And it's not like ridiculously fast or anything, but it's still you know, a test per second kind of a thing. And it gives you, it is the entire stack just minus the network traffic. It also gives you much more handles going on. So in MVC, a lot of the things behind the scenes, you can know what's going on, you can get a error. And you can actually remove the dependency on IIS, so you can now on ASP net MVC with the race of your engine in process. Yeah, so for the last couple of Nomad components that we published, we used Owen pretty extensively, so we have stuff in Azure running as a service that doesn't have IIS. Microsoft have released a preview bridge that allows you to use IIS, but cut out the ASP.NET pipeline, which is where all the performance issues were, and run any Owen apps directly on top of IIS. And that's 
you know, if you go, I don't have their graphs, but if you go look at the graphs, it is pretty incredible, sort of the increase in requests per second. Uh, so you can run anything on the web roles, so I guess you probably can. I don't know. We used we used worker roles because we were doing crazy Java stuff as well. Um, but you could sort of tell they didn't say it directly, but you could tell from all the talks that they're doing a lot of this for Azure. So they really like you to be able to run Nancy on Azure websites, I reckon. Um, and you can't really do that at the moment because it's all just so tied together. Nigel. No, that was so Helios is the name of the project that allows you to run Owen directly on top of IIS. Um, but I haven't. No, it runs directly on top of it takes out the ASP.NET runtimey stuff in IIS, but the thing that binds to the socket is still is still IIS. It makes it very lightweight. Yeah. So IIS is quite thin. People think of when they think of the heavyweight IIS, it's probably all the ASP.NET managed pipeline stuff they're thinking of. Yeah, you should go and check it out. It's really good. Thanks very much.